Look, we all give up on stuff sometimes. It's tough to see things right through to the end. I mean, just look at the number of Neopets I've left locked in a virtual room to starve to death over the years. I get it, these things happen, and they happen no more often than with TV shows. In today's age of streaming services, the world of television often feels completely oversaturated most of the time, so we can all be forgiven for giving up on a TV series for one reason or another. Over the years, there have been a myriad of sci-fi shows that have fallen afoul of this particular fate, left to gather dust like a once beloved childhood toy. But don't worry, we're not leveling all the blame on you guys. In fact, the you in this title has two meanings. There's the you listening to this right now who gave up on those shows too soon, like the adorable hyper energetic puppy that you are who can't focus on anything for more than a goddamn second. And there's the you, meaning the TV networks, who gave up on these shows too early, also much like a hyperactive puppy who can't focus on anything, but considerably less adorable. So enjoy watching this knowing that at most, only half of the blame lies with you. I'm Will for Culture, and here are 10 recent sci-fi TV shows you gave up on too soon. 10. Daybreak Netflix do not currently treat their originals particularly well, and frankly, their current model is pretty broken. And good god if Daybreak isn't a prime example because it didn't even get a shot at getting over the second hurdle. Now we all know that Netflix doesn't give out viewer numbers, but we're hedging our bets that, given Daybreak's premiere date and its cancellation date, the folks over at Netflix didn't even have enough time to read those numbers. Yeah, Netflix gave up on Daybreak way too soon, and there's a good chance you did too, because Daybreak pulled off a pretty great fakeout, one that's even addressed by one of the main characters. That fakeout is this. We're introduced to a boring vanilla stock protagonist called Josh, because of course he's called Josh, who we've met about a million times over the years. Then by episode 4, Daybreak pulls the rug out and we all get to meet the wonderful, three-dimensional and hilariously odd characters who were the real heart of the show. On top of that, Daybreak was the perfect answer to the zombie overload of the 2010s. It was funny, it was schlocky, and it was fully aware of how cheesy and stupid it was. Shame on you, Netflix! Shame on you! Also, people at Netflix, if you're watching this, please don't leave. I'm gonna be yelling at you a lot more this video. 9. Origin Honestly, you could list pretty much anything from YouTube's endless list of originals that got the axe after about 5 minutes, thanks to their abysmal advertising, among other things. But we are going to go with the woefully underrated and underwatched Origin. Origin follows a group of passengers aboard a spacecraft after they've come out of stasis. None of them know one another, and none are willing to give up why the hell they chose to be on the board ship anyway. And one of them isn't entirely what they seem. Ooh. Yeah, sure, the premise might sound way too familiar, but Origin actually manages to pull it off, thanks to some frankly awesome performances. That and the slow drip feed of each character's backstory works wonders at adding depth to people that you initially don't care about, or in a few cases, actually actively despise. It also helps that although the premise is nothing new, Origin takes all the best parts of thriller horror classics and manages to make them all its own. Also, you don't have to worry about pining too much after Origin because although it does end on something of a cliffhanger, the show manages to work as a self-contained miniseries, if you lie to yourself hard enough. 8. Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency so, uh, what is precisely a holistic detective? That is a great question, I have no idea. The best way to describe this show is that some dude basically wanders around just letting the world occur around him. Whatever happens happens, and it's meant to happen. Usually these things are super weird. There's also these soul vampires and a holistic hitman to contend with too. But you don't need to understand it to enjoy it, okay? Dirk Gently is so delightfully strange, quirky, and over the top, and what makes it all the better is just how much the show revels in these traits. When you think it can't get weirder, Dirk and company go ahead and turn it up to 11, and way beyond. On top of this, the characters are awesome, as is the relationship between Elijah Woods and Samuel Barnett. On top of that, the music's awesome, and trying to unravel just what the hell is going on is an absolute delight. 7. Santa Clarita Diet Assume the position, Netflix, I'm coming back for round two. Now, it's not like this show got off to a slow start. We got treated to copious vomit and cannibalism from the first 10 minutes, but the amount of people who seemed to tune out after the first or second episode is absolutely shocking. 
Santa Clarita Diet had enough steam left for at least another two seasons, and it's truly sad that we won't get to see what eventually becomes of our protagonists. On top of the brilliant chemistry between its leads, Santa Clarita Diet also boasted some of the strongest, sharpest writing outside of 30 Rock and Arrested Development. In practically every episode, the writers managed to take what felt like a dozen zombie tropes and flip them on the heads, as well as taking any expectations that the audience might have about where the plot was going and smash them to pieces. It really is a shame that we won't get to dine out with the Hammonds again. 6. The Tick The Tick was precisely everything anyone familiar with the comics could have wanted from a TV adaptation. It deviated from the source material just enough to feel like its own thing, while still remaining faithful enough to the comics that it didn't lose the ridiculous tone that made the comics so brilliant in the first place. However, this was probably most likely the problem with The Tick and the reason people either gave up on it or didn't even give it a chance to begin with. Despite being well appreciated among comic fans, The Tick's following is still very much of the cult variety, and it's kind of understandable why people would be turned off. Unlike other underground comic adaptations, like The Boys for example, The Tick didn't promise out and out gory action in almost every frame. What it promised was a weird, surreal, self-referential, meta-fictional superhero story, and if you weren't familiar with how great that already was on paper, you probably wouldn't dive headfirst into it. Which is a shame because The Tick delivered in every direction apartment. The writing skewered almost every trope we've come to expect from superhero movies and TV shows, while still managing to be one long love letter to superheroes and comic books at the same time. And of course, it stars the national treasure, Peter Schlittlewitch, who's my favourite actor whose name I, I can't pronounce, I'm sorry, I, I tried so many times. He's a goddamn legend, I've loved him since Spaced, I just wish he was called Peter Smith. 5. People of Earth Honestly, Lord knows why People of Earth never managed to find its feet with the general public. You could perhaps chalk it up again to a bad ad campaign, or perhaps because of the show's unconventional tone not quite clicking with viewers in the right way. But like some of the best shows, if you stick with People of Earth, you'll get one of the funniest and often the sweetest sci-fi comedies out there. It is a sad reality that those people who are wired a little differently are, more often than not, mocked for said wiring, especially in comedy TV shows. What was so refreshing about People of Earth was that the members of Starcross weren't ever portrayed as ranting manic lunatics, but just people who went through a difficult experience and simply wanted help. Beyond that, it was all so funny as hell. People of Earth took full advantage of all the overused sci-fi tropes out there and absolutely bled them dry whilst retaining a sense of humanity. Check this one out, you won't regret it. 4. Utopia Alright, there's probably quite a good reason why you didn't stick around for Utopia during its criminally short run on Channel 4. Don't worry, Amazon are bringing it back. You need a pretty strong stomach to get past that first episode, even that first scene. Without giving anything away, the very first scene of Utopia will leave a sickeningly cold feeling in your stomach and later might actually make you feel physically ill. It is totally understandable why Utopia had complaints levied against it for gratuitous violence. Except once you get past the first couple of episodes, you realise that the world of Utopia would make no sense if it wasn't as despicably violent as it is. Utopia is a nerd's absolute dream. It follows a group of comic book nerds after a fabled manuscript that's also being sought after by a shadowy branch of the government, who sends sociopathic hitmen out to deal with our intrepid heroes. That's a lot to chew over, I know, but trust me, that is nothing compared to what unravels over the course of these 12 hours or so. Utopia is gruesome, gory, complex, colourful, and 100% phenomenal. And if you're hunting for a conspiracy theory, this one's for you. 3. Ash vs Evil Dead This is just another in a long list of examples of networks having no idea how to market their shows. Because despite subpar viewing numbers, Ash vs Evil Dead is utter perfection. Now, fan service is something of double-edged sword at the best of times. More often than not, producers end up just doing whatever they assume will please fans while sacrificing any actual narrative substance. But once in a blue moon, something comes along and delivers everything you could possibly hope for, and Ash vs Evil Dead falls into that category. It boasts everything that made the Evil Dead series so great in the first place. It's hilarious, it's bloody, it's gory, it has chainsaws and guns and knives and zombies. Oh, and of course, it's got Bruce goddamn Campbell back in the saddle again. 2. Humans 
The ratings for humans tell such a sad, sorry tale, going from almost 6 million in the UK for its first episode and gradually dwindling down to just over a million by the time of its season 3 finale, which is a shame because humans was a beautiful little bit of existential sci-fi. You might have given up halfway through season 1 because, admittedly, it was a little bit slow. But I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. The first season dealt far more with how androids being domestic appliances affects the lives of those who choose to have them and the concept of humanity itself. Whereas a lot of people just wanted to see the humans and the robots fighting. Which is, you know, fair enough and we do get it by the second half of season 1. However, the action was never what made humans so good. It's during season 2 that humans starts to ask the especially tricky questions regarding androids, AI, and the ethics concerning both. In its third season, the show becomes a wonderful analysis of the struggle of marginalized groups to gain civil rights. Just how frankly awful it is that we, as a species, have historically denied these rights to certain groups. You won't get rock'em sock'em robots from humans, but if you want a beautifully put together show that'll make you think, then go and give it a second chance. 1. Counterparts J.K. Simmons is in this show. How did this fail? Counterpart is everything you could possibly want from a sci-fi show. It's got a tightly knit, complex narrative involving interdimensional espionage, the dialogue and writing in general is razor sharp, but the highlights are the performances. Every actor in Counterpart is utterly outstanding in absolutely every scene, but the real prize goes to those who play two completely different versions of themselves, in particular lead actor J.K. Simmons. There is something endlessly satisfying in watching Simmons' Howard Silk have a conversation with himself and every tiny nuance that Simmons makes to subtly highlight everything. These go from the obvious, such as the fact that the two men wear very different clothes to one another, all the way down to how they hold and drink from a glass. You'd be forgiven for thinking Counterpart was perhaps a little dry, maybe even convoluted, and yeah, to be fair, it kind of is, but words cannot describe just how perfect a show Counterpart was. So check it out! Please check it out! And there you have it folks, 10 recent sci-fi TV shows you gave up on too soon. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at usly.org. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.